tanks or the two reservoir you can see uh, this is the large and this is the smaller one and the water temperature is 10 degrees centigrade so we actually need to you know, transfer the water from this tank to this tank and um, here we can see the piping systems so it is a five centimeter diameter pipe um, you can you can see some some elbows here here we have a fully open valve uh, here at the sections so what is happening actually um, you see this red dotted line it is actually the control volume of this system the elevation here it is four meter we need to actually calculate the elevation here the water is flowing six liter per second this is the velocity okay so this is the flow rate um, given and what we can see the length of the pipe um, you, you look here from this section to this section up to this so this is 80 meter so that means this part and this part so we have this vertical distance this pipe as well so it is 9 meter so we can say we have total uh, 89 meter pipe okay yeah so that's the total length of the pipe um, and we have a sharp eyes entrance here this is the entrance this is the tank okay this is the entrance you see this is kind of 90 degree the sharp sharp edged entrance so water is coming this way we have this um, elbow here we have this one here so it's the same thing and we know the corresponding loss coefficients we also know the loss coefficients for the fully open valve and uh, the exit pipe here we also have the exit pipe so this loss coefficient also given so we know all these informations we just need to calculate the jade one okay so what we can write down here is let's say the assumption so we'll say this is a steady incompressible okay and the elevation is constant snow pump no turbines so we can say this is a steady and incompressible so i'm not just uh, writing clearly you already know and we say this is you know the elevation is constant it's given so we can write it down or we don't if we want to we, we, yeah we can just skip it so another thing we can say the no pumps no pump or no turbine are used uh, okay so we are not using any pump or turbine in this case we are just using the elevations you see here like um by using the if we use this elevation then we can easily you know transport this water from this this reservoir to this reservoir anyway so this is uh what information we know and now if we talk about the properties of this we have the water so the water properties at 15 degrees and at 10 degrees centigrade uh, so we need to calculate the water properties so it should be nine 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 point seven kg meter cube okay so that's the and you know density and the viscosity viscosity it will be like 1.307 and 10 to the power minus 3 kg per meter second okay we have um, the other information here the the pipe this is the cast iron so i already showed you during the um, tutorials especially so for the cast iron the roughness uh, epsilon this is 0 0.00026 meter okay so this is the wall information um, you can get it maybe from 8.3 table 8.3 okay so this is all the properties we have now we will start with the analysis so before going to start with the analysis let's say what I mentioned earlier that we have the pipe this is 80 meter this is 9 meters so total 89 meter pipe we have one sharp edge entrance the corresponding uh, loss coefficient we have two standard elbows the loss coefficient we have the valve one and the exit one so this is all we know um, the other thing we can say here is uh, the pressure at this section P2 we can say this is actually the atmospheric pressure pressure p1 here we can say this is atmospheric pressure because this is open to the atmosphere okay <clears throat> and uh, in we as i said it is the free surface okay so the velocity at this point so we're talking about the point this point <clears throat> and the, this point 
So we can say the velocity v1, it is um, a velocity v2. We can say this is nearly zero. Okay, it's nearly zero. <coughs> so we need to calculate the elevation um, z1. So now if we apply, let's say this is point one, this is point two, that means two reservoirs. So now if we apply the energy equations for this problem, so let's say the energy equations from section one and two, <coughs> then we can write it down like P1 rho g, V1 squared 2g, let's say this is alpha one, J1, uh, we have no pumps, no turbines, so I'm not writing that, okay? P2 rho g, alpha two, V2 squared 2g, and J2. <coughs> We say the V1 and V2 are, uh, this is zero, so we can cancel it out. Pressure P1, P2, this is the atmospheric pressure, so we can cancel it out. So we got the elevation J1, this is equal J2. Okay, we have one more thing like the head loss, the high cell. So this is actually the formula. Okay. So we already know. Um, the haze jet two, so we need the this, this head loss. So head loss uh, actually here will have two types of head loss. One is due to these uh, kind of changes like this valve, this inlets, this openings in uh, this valve, this um, elbows. Like this is minor loss. There is another one. This is due to the friction, and this is the major loss. So we can say the total loss. This is. Um, this is actually, you know, the the total loss you all know the formula. It will be the the major loss and the minor loss, right? So now, the major loss means this is um, related to the frictions. So we need to calculate the friction and uh, the friction factor value. So for friction factor value, we need to calculate the Reynolds number. That means we need to calculate the Moody diagram. So that's only you know the um, thing we need to do but for the minor loss actually we need to make the summations of all the coefficient is given in the problem so now if I just write it down this is a uh, Hayes L uh, major okay and this is Hayes L minor okay so this is major loss and the minor loss and in other words we can say this kind of F L over D sum of KL V square over 2G. So this is the formula. <clears throat> so let's calculate the friction factor. And we know if we want to get the friction factor, we need to calculate the Moody charts. To get the Moody charts, we need the Reynolds number. And to get the Reynolds number, we need the velocity. So that means if we want to calculate the A friction factor, initially we'll calculate the velocity. So, what is the velocity? Velocity V is the volume flow rate over the area. Volume flow rate is given, um, you know, uh, 6. So, it is liter per second. So, 0 0.006 meter cube per second. And this is pi by 4, the diameter square. So, diameter is 0 0.05 square. So, the pipe diameter is 0 0.05. And we will get the velocity is 3.06. Okay, 3.06. This is meter per second. So this is we have the velocity. So now once we have the velocity, let's calculate the Reynolds number. So the Reynolds number, you know, the density, velocity, diameter, and the viscosity. <coughs> density 9.99.7. Okay, kg per meter cube. It is 3.06 meter per second diameter 0 0.05 meter and the viscosity is 1.307 10 to the power minus 3 so we'll get it is 117000 so this is clearly greater than 2300 so we can say flow is turbulent okay the flow is turbulent so for turbulent flow uh, we got the Reynolds number okay so if we want to get uh, the Moody charts uh, the friction spectrum from Moody charts or the or we know the Colebrook equation. So we need the value 
uh, epsilon over d. So epsilon we got 0 0.0006 and the diameter is 0 0.05. So this roughness factor we will get it is 0 0.0052. So this is epsilon over d. Now from Colebrook equations, um, you know, from Colebrook equations, we know 1 over f. This is the friction factor equal negative 2 log epsilon over d 3.7 plus 2.51 over the Reynolds number into the square root of f. You, uh, if you know guys, this is the equations and the Moody diagram is based on these equations. So you can use the equation solver, you can substitute this value epsilon over d from here and the Reynolds number we already know this. So if we substitute all these values then we will get f equal f equal actually 0 0.0315. Here we used the equation solver so you can use the equation solver um, and then that will give you much accurate solutions um, the values. So we have got the f um, you see uh, the HSL that means we need f we already know ld now the sum of KL. The sum of KL that means uh, the sum of the minor losses. Okay, So the sum of the minor losses we have the KL for the entrance here 0 0.5. We have two um, elbows. Okay, We have two elbow. This is the value. We have one valve, KL for valve and KL for the opening, that means the outlet, this value, this value, so all these values. So now the first one is 0 0.5 uh, plus 2 into 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2 plus 1.06. So this is, we'll get it is 2.36. So this is sum of KL, so that means all the minor losses. Now the total uh, head loss, hay cell. Hay cell it is F L over D sum of K L B square over 2 G. So F um, we got 0 0.0315 the length we got the pipe length is 89 meter diameter is 0 0.05 this Summation is 2.36, velocity 3.06 square, and 2 into 9.8. So if we uh, calculate this value, it will be 27.9 meter. So this is Hayes L. So we have got the head loss, total head loss. So now the J don, and you know J don. This is equal J2 plus Hayes L. So J2 is 4. It's given here. Hayes L is 27.9, so it will be 31.9 meter. So this is the J1 value, that means the, the elevations. So, so what we did here, we just calculated the elevations and uh, we used the energy equations. It was pretty straightforward problem, um, like this uh, KL, the only issue was with the, uh, you know, the friction factor value, but we used the Kullberg equations. Mm, but still you can use the Moody diagram as you have this, we have the Reynolds number, you have the, you know, the relative roughness values for the cast iron. So yeah, um, if you want you can use the Moody charts or you can use, um, you know, the Kullberg equations. So in this case, um, we'll discuss during the lecture that how we can modify this problem, okay.